Israel destroys the Al-Aqsa Mosque to build the Third Temple? It won't be long until the end of the world. Many of the biblical indicators of the rapture are already here. The Jews' construction of a Third Temple is a major indicator of the rapture. Do you understand the significance of the Al-Aqsa Mosque? Here's a video with the explanations we need. In this video, we will discuss the destruction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Israel to construct the Third Temple, as well as the various prophecies related to it. Stay tuned. Israel, known as the Holy Land, is a Middle Eastern country on the coast of the Mediterranean. Many people believe that this land has been considered holy since the beginning of time. Recent happenings in Israel's ancient city, however, have been anything but sacred. The country's biblical significance makes it all the more painful to witness its descent into anarchy at a time when the Al-Aqsa Mosque, one of Jerusalem's holiest sites, is in imminent danger of being destroyed. Is it true that Israel is attempting to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque, or is that merely a myth? The Al-Aqsa Mosque, also known as Jami Al-Aqsa or the Qibli Mosque, is located in the center of the old city of Jerusalem. King Herod the Great, during the reconstruction of the Second Holy Temple in the year 20 BCE, expanded the enclosure that today houses the mosque on the Temple Mount, also known as Harim al-Sharif. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, built in 1035, is barely younger than the Kaaba in Mecca. Muslim tradition, however, claims that the Al-Aqsa Mosque has existed for far longer. The year 705 CE marked its formal establishment as such. There is an ongoing threat that could destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. As early as June 2022, several Islamic authorities in East Jerusalem said they had seen suspicious excavation operations being conducted by the Israelis. Near the mosque's external base, an Israeli archaeological team and the Israeli Antiquities Authority have been conducting excavations. The Islamic Aquaf Affairs and Holy Sites Committee issued a statement saying, a group of personnel with bulldozers and excavation equipment has been working with remarkable haste in the region. This, however, is only one side of the story. It has been argued that this may be a widely held misconception among Muslims. The actions of Jewish settlers and the statements made by extremist groups have contributed to the spread of this belief. According to the Islamic Endowments Authority, dozens of settlers, accompanied by police, entered the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and explored the area. Except for Fridays and Saturdays, the Israeli government has allowed settlers onto the volatile site nearly every day since 2003. Jews in occupied East Jerusalem were polled by the Anadalu Agency to see if they supported tearing down the mosque. Religious activist Raziela Harpaz denied any such claim, saying, God will do it. He predicted that the current Al-Aqsa Mosque would be destroyed by God and that a third temple would be built in its place. Everything, especially Al-Aqsa, he argued, is Jewish property since the Jews are God's chosen and holy people. Nina Shalansky, a college student originally from the United States, does not think Al-Aqsa should be entirely under Jewish rule. Despite the desires of some ultra-Orthodox groups, she said, I believe the vast majority of Israelis are content with the status quo. They try to silence us, unfortunately, she remarked. Shalansky brought attention to the fact that these communities, while constituting a relatively tiny percentage of Israelis overall, wield considerable sway on the country's political landscape. One more religious leader, Rabbi Rave Moyel Mikhail, has come out against the initiative. The Israeli people don't aim for that. He emphasized the importance of tranquility for the people. Yeshiva student Motai Kohizeg predicted when Jesus returns, the Al-Aqsa Mosque will be torn down and the Jewish temple reconstructed there. We've always thought that there was no reason to change its structure in any way. Kohizeg stressed that they would not be destroying the facility by fire or closing it down. If you're a Muslim, you should visit Al-Aqsa Mosque because it is the third holiest location in the world. Jews refer to this location as the Temple Mount, claiming that it was the location of two ancient Jewish temples. East Jerusalem, where Al-Aqsa is situated, was conquered by Israel during the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. In 1980, Israel annexed the entire city, though that move has never been fully acknowledged by the rest of the world. The History of Al-Aqsa Mosque to Muslims, the history of the Prophet Muhammad is intertwined with the sanctity of al-Masjid al-Aqsa and the entire Haram al-Sharif.
Part of this sacred history is the nighttime voyage of the noble messenger from al Majdid al Haram to al Majdid al Aqsa, where he led all the former prophets in Salah and then ascended to heaven to Sidra al Muntaha. In 638 CE, under the leadership of Umar, Muslims conquered the city of Jerusalem. He erected a modest structure on the site where the noble messenger had led the earlier prophets in Salah. Al Majdid al Aqsa is the name for this sacred site. Improvements were made to the building in 705 CE, and shortly after, the Dome of the Rock, famous for its massive golden dome, was completed. Both mosques are considered to be parts of the larger Al Haram al Sharif. After being damaged by earthquakes in 746 CE and again in 1033 CE, the mosques were rebuilt in even greater splendor. Their significance and centrality in Islamic mysticism were not diminished even after their brief loss to the Crusaders in 1099 through 1187. After liberating Jerusalem from the Crusaders, Salah al-Din Ayyubi repaired the city's two holy mosques, including al-Majjid al-Aqsa, where he erected a minbar that had been commissioned by his maternal uncle, Nur al-Din Zangi. When he passed away before he could complete the work, his nephew, Salah al-Din, took it upon himself to finish what his uncle had started, the Third Jewish Temple and the Prophecy of Redemption in Israel. Israel, my exiled people, will return, and they will rebuild the towns they destroyed and make their homes in them. They will tend vineyards and enjoy the wine. They will cultivate gardens and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Never again will Israel be uprooted from the place I have given them. I will plant them there. Amos 9, 14 and 15 Many people in the world are quick to declare that the Jewish people have been abandoned by God and the state of Israel was founded by human hands. However, the Bible reveals that God never intended to permanently abandon his chosen people. You, Israel, are my servant. You, Jacob, whom I have chosen. You, a descendant of Abraham, are my buddy. You are the one whom I have taken from the ends of the world and called from its remotest parts and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you, according to the word of the Lord. Isaiah 4, 9. God's plan for the return of the Jewish people to the land was always to happen on God's terms, not man's. As the prophets predicted, the Jewish people are ending their nearly two millennia-long diasporas and making their way back to the Holy Land. Have no apprehension. I am with you. I will gather your progeny from the east and bring you together from the west. I am going to yell at the north to give them up, and if you are down south, don't stop them. Send my children from afar, my daughters from the farthest reaches of the earth, to paraphrase Isaiah 43, 5, and 6. Not only are Israelis returning to their homeland, but the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount Faithful Movement are making strides toward constructing the third temple on the Temple Mount. For what purpose should a third temple be constructed? Here I am with the children the Lord has blessed me with, we represent the Lord God Almighty, who resides atop Zion, and we are here as signs and symbols for the people of Israel. Isaiah 8, 18. You may wonder, why even consider building the Holy Temple if the sanctuary is a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven? Hebrews 8, 5. And Yeshua, or Jesus, serves in the sanctuary, the genuine tabernacle set up by the Lord. Hebrews 8, 2. There was never any doubt that the Holy Temple in Jerusalem was more than a mere structure. It was a physical home for the presence of God on earth. So that I may shake, dwell, among them, the Lord answered, Let them build a refuge for me. Exodus 25, 8. Compare with Exodus 40, 34 and 35, and 1 Kings 8, 11. Shekhinah derived from the Hebrew word for house, Shechen, is used in rabbinic writings and Bible translations to refer to the Lord's divine presence, but is not present in the original Hebrew Bible. This ends the video for today. What do you think about this? Is Israel really trying to demolish Al-Aqsa Mosque? Let us know in the comment section. Also, tell us on which topic we should make our next video. Like and share this video. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video.